So I'm the non-photographer here, and probably no one would want any of my pictures for free, except you dusted someone would pay for a dog picture, which is my only good picture, so <laughs> anyone wants. But you can't take a bad picture of a golden retriever. So <laughs> other than that, they're all crap. You have a future. <laughs> But anyway, so the problem with being a lawyer is no one comes to you when everything's going great. So all you hear when things come wrong. So you're always raising the red flags. And uh, so I don't want to be the Debbie Downer here. But, you know, there are, things happen, as they say, on times. And so what's important for customers to know is what they're getting when they go to any kind of image site, whether it's for free or you're buying a license. There's always going to be terms and conditions. There's going to be limitations. There's going to be things you can do, things you can't do. And there, there may be reps and warranties and indemnities. And often these are the, the small print no one wants to read until you're in trouble. So, um, so we talked about Unsplash, which is um, very popular. I have a lot of clients that are using it, and they're, you know, they come to me and they're like, well, you know, what, what are the risks? When should you use it and when not to use it? And so I think there's a lot of uses where there's absolutely no risk in using it, and it depends on the image and the kind of use, because with un Unsplash, for example, you get really broad rights to use pictures for commercial purpose without permission, and you don't require attribution to the photographer. But the word commercial purpose is a little tricky because the only thing a user is purportedly getting is a copyright license. Um, there's no releases in images that are unsplash. And so for sort of the unsophisticated user who might hear the word commercial, they'll think, and have been used to working with some commercial libraries, typically commercial images are all the ones that have releases with them. So you have to be very careful. So for example, one of uh, a client of another lawyer in my firm had been, had a whole website with mostly images from Unsplash, but then wanted to publish a book. And I sort of went through the terms with her and realized that any pictures with people should be replaced and use with images that have licenses that have releases. Um, and uh, there's also restrictions. So if you want to, for example, you know, do print on demand or use something where the image is the only sort of predominant part of the object, um, that would not be permitted um, on the unsplash terms and conditions. So you can go into a print on demand business by using other people's photos. And um, again, I already said this, but there, it's sort of, it's as is, so the photographers will upload their images, and probably almost all of the time it will be the photographer, but of course I have seen issues where someone uploads other people's images. Um, it may not happen often, but it's possible. And uh, so things really are as is, where if you go to some, uh, sites where you're paying for a license, you will get a company that will stand behind the image. So if someone claims that they're Jeremy Bishop and they're not, uh, there'll be some, someone else will handle that claim for you. Um, so there's no, generally with some of the, the free sites, because they're free, they're not going to be able to uh, have the type of insurance that can stand behind the images. Um, and under the U.S., at least, if you are a platform and have user-generated content and you qualify, you will have protection under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. So you will not have any liability for claims of copyright infringement if you're a qualified internet service provider. Um, and often there's um, similar restrictions on the unpaid as well as the paid content. Um, your, uh, the user uh, is not allowed to violate third party rights and they're not allowed to infringe the work. And there's these objectionable uses that you're not to do with any content. Usually you can't use content for something that's defamatory, libelous, uh, and then there's all types of pornography, harassing, 
Uh, different sites have different restrictions, but you're generally not to do something offensive with an image. Um, sort of think about it, if your face was on that picture, would you want someone to use it in that way? Um, so these inappropriate use uses are uh, prohibited. And just a picture of Pexels. And so Pexels is interesting because it gives you a Creative Commons zero license, which is the broadest Creative Commons license is almost as public domain, where you dedicate the work to the public and can be used for all personal and commercial purposes. They also have some non-CCO licenses that are broad, royalty-free, um, but they also don't require attribution or selling of unaltered copies. Um, it's also under German law, the contract. Um, again, it's similar with other uh, free sites where there's no third-party clearances. You have to do your own third-party clearances yourself. Um, no sensitive use, no illegal content, no using it in a legal way uh, or any way that would be defamatory and discriminatory. And with defamatory, usually an image itself is truthful, so it won't be defamatory. But what, how you caption an image or the juxtaposition of other content could really change the meaning of an image. And as a platform or an image seller, you never know how your customer is going to use an image. So um, that's where you would want language in your terms of use to protect you as a platform for what your customer might do. And as with most images, you can't grant a trademark use because then no one else could use the picture. Uh, and you don't want anyone competing with your platform and just collecting images to make their own platform. So everything, again, is as is, and you don't need attribution. So Creative Commons licenses, everyone, I don't know if they're familiar with them, but there's a lot of varieties of those. And many of them, um, and many people get them mixed up, which ones are which. Because some of them do require attribution. It's part of the license. So if you don't give attribution, you've actually violated the terms of use. Some do not permit commercial use. Some don't allow derivatives. Others require you to uh, whatever you create, you have to keep it under the same license that you got it on. And the broadest one is the CC0, which is, in essence, like giving the work to the public domain. And the Creative Commons licenses um, arise out of the fact that copyright is automatic. So as soon as you create something, you automatically own a copyright. So in a sharing society, it's very hard to share without granting a license because you automatically create copyright infringement. And so the Creative Commons licenses have a lot of variety, varieties to suit different industry needs. Um, but you have to be careful that you actually look at which Creative Commons license there is. A, a, a former law partner of mine, her husband was one of these internet gurus and loved the idea of putting a book up online and trying to sell it and picked a Creative Commons license, but he didn't ask his wife, the copyright lawyer, and he picked the wrong one and it was totally shocked when a publisher was selling his book. And she's like, yeah, well, <laughs> it didn't say non-commercial use. <laughs> so, um, so with the Creative Commons license, you also, it's also the mystery black box. When someone uploads content and puts a Creative Commons license on, there's no way to verify that the person uploading it is actually the owner and is authorized to put a license on it. Uh, it's just a licensing system and there has to be trust. And again, you don't get any indemnification as you would if you license an image from some of the more traditional image libraries, and there's also no third-party clearances. So you may get a copyright license, but you're not going to get permission for any objects in the image, such as recognizable people, any kind of art or outdoor sculpture or graffiti that could be in an image, or any other type of very highly identifiable properties. Um, and with paid for content, you may, and you have to look at the terms and conditions, but typically you will get uh, indemnification if a claim arises and you use the content in a way that's authorized. Um, often it may be capped or you can get more um, protection if you buy an extended license. But there's generally reps and warranties that the content won't be infringe any copyright, and if you 
um, get a release and you use the content in the way it's authorized, you'll have um, an indemnification from the company. Uh, and often you'll get perpetual licenses, and depending on the license, there could be unlimited types of uses as well. Um, so again, you always have to read terms and conditions. Um, typically, unless you're getting an exclusive right, you are going to get a non-exclusive license with most of these broad rights, and you can't transfer or sub-license the content um, in certain ways under the terms and conditions. For example, you can't, again, you know, just sell the images and collect them yourselves. And also similar restrictions on unlawful use, can't have standalone file use, no trademark out of the images, no sensitive use without an additional license, and you can't falsely claim that you created the image when you didn't. So that's an overview of the sort of the tricks and traps of all kinds of licensing. <laughs>